So recently, I made a bunch of interconnected theory videos talking about the various universes that is going to merge with the Dota 2 universe in the upcoming Great Confluence event. So by now, it's pretty obvious that the Great Confluence is a huge crossover event that merges multiple realities that exists in the Dota multiverse. And in this video, I'm going to take all of the things that I discussed in the previous videos of this ongoing theory and talk about how all of these realities of the Dota multiverse is going to converge based on the relative distance or the proximity between these timelines in this great confluence event. But before we begin, I gotta say that this video is part of a bigger theory that is split up into multiple parts. And these theory videos are interconnected like shown here. Yes, I know this might look confusing, but all you need to know for now is that you are currently watching this video right here. And I highly recommend you to watch the videos that came before this video to properly understand the things that I'm gonna say in this video. And the links for all of the related videos are in the description box below if you wanna check them out. But if you already watched the previous videos of this theory, let's begin this video. So when I first started making these theory videos related to the Great Confluence a few years back, one of the first things that I told you guys is the fact that the word confluence means the merging of two similar rivers, where in this case, the two similar rivers seem to represent the timelines of the Horn and the Dota 2 games. Because after some theory crafting, I came to the conclusion that the events of these two games are actually taking place in two similar alternate universes or parallel universes. Because they are both similar games that were derived from Dota 1, and therefore they have similar heroes, items, and so on and so forth. And all of these factors makes these two games pretty close to the definition of parallel universes. And up until recently, I thought that the Great Confluence is just gonna be the merging of these two games, or in this case, these two universes. But if you guys watched the previous videos of this ongoing theory series, you will know that so far, I have talked about a total of three universes that is gonna merge with the Dota 2 universe in this Great Confluence. And they are the Horn universe, the Dota Dragon's Blood anime universe, and the Dota 1 universe. And in those videos, I also said that as these universes merge with the Dota 2 universe, they are gonna bring a bunch of crossover content into the Dota 2 game from their respective universes. And these include a multitude of content like heroes, in-game items, skins, and a bunch of other crossover content that are inspired by these other universes. But just in case you guys were too lazy to watch the previous videos of this theory, or you guys just wanna refresh your memory, here's a summarized list of the crossover content that I discussed up until this point. So you are free to pause the video right now and read through this list if you like like because I can't really go over like 6 videos worth of info again in this video because it will just be a waste of time. And besides if you guys want more details on this matter, you can always check out the previous videos of this theory, links in the description. But anyways, on top of the crossover content that we get from these three universes, I also think we can expect crossovers from two other games. And the first game is Dota Underlords. And I say this because in the Hero Dare League analysis videos I did a while back, I came to the conclusion that the Dare League hero named the Rat King, who is also known as the Mouse in some cases, is actually NO from Dota Underlords, because their abilities, names and titles seems to match very closely. And you can check out the Dare League analysis videos I did on the Mouse and the Rat King hero to find out why I say this is the case, links in the description. But anyways, since a bunch of these Dare League heroes have already made it into Dota 2 as playable characters, I think it's only a matter of time before the Rat King Dare League hero aka Eno from Dota Underlords is gonna be released into Dota 2 as a new hero. And I'm pretty sure that Eno the Rat King is just gonna be the first of many crossovers that we can expect from Dota Underlords to make its way into Dota 2 in the future. But anyways, in addition to Dota Underlord crossovers, we can also expect crossovers from Dota Artifact as well, because there are a bunch of voice lines from existing Dota 2 heroes that mentions about characters from Dota Artifact, and you will notice that most of these voice lines are spoken by Dark Willow, and I'll get back to this later on in the video, but for now, listen to these voice lines. Rex is gonna kill you. You're not friends with Mazzy, are you? I hate that little runt. You're much more reasonable than Sorla. I apologize for lumping you in with the Red Mist Orb. You are nothing like Sola Khan. After fighting Sola Khan, you are a sorry disappointment. Sola can have your skin, but the meat's mine. Axe, when this battle is over, we must discuss what to do about Sola Khan. Azra, you haven't heard any rumors of Kana's return, have you? Have you? So as you can see, these voice lines are clearly talking about these characters from Dota Artifact. And in one of the Dare League analysis videos I did a while back, I did find out that the Dare League hero named the Engineer seems to be Mazzy from Artifact. And you guys can go check out that video for more details on this matter. But all in all, I think it's safe to say that we might see characters from Dota Artifact crossing over into Dota 2 as new heroes in the future. So it seems like characters and maybe even items from Dota Underlords and Dota Artifact will eventually make their way into Dota 2 
in the Great Confluence. However, I do like to point out that I personally think the events of Dota Underlords and Dota Artifact happens within the main Dota 2 universe, and not in an alternate universe like in the case of Horn, the Dragon's Blood anime and the Dota 1 game. And I say this because there are direct links between the events and the characters in these three games. And one such character who links all of these three games at once is Dark Willow. Because like we saw early on in the video, we found out that on one side her voice lines clearly show that she knows multiple characters from Artifact. And over on the other side, there are also signs that Hopgen from Dota Underlords is in love with Dark Willow. So as you can see, all three of these games have direct connections to each other through heroes like Dark Willow. So I'm pretty sure that the events of these three games takes place in the same universe which is the Dota 2 universe but in different time periods or different locations. So as you can see this great confluence is basically a huge crossover event that is going to take place in Dota 2 and this lines up with the fact that according to Voidspeed's law, it is stated to be an event that is going to merge multiple realities together and I can't believe that I missed the fact that his law specifically states that there will be multiple realities that is going to collide with the Dota 2 universe and not just two universes like I initially thought which is the Hon and the Dota 2 universes. So I guess back then I was so focused on the definition of the word confluence meaning the merge of two similar rivers that I completely ignored the fact that Void Spirit's law clearly stated that this merging is going to involve multiple realities and this would explain why this confluence is called the Great Confluence and not just the confluence or something like that. But anyway, since we now have discussed all of the realities that is going to converge in this huge crossover event, we can now talk about how exactly are they going to merge. You see, the merging of these realities in the Dota multiverse is actually shown to us through the Continuum device because the trailer and the homepage video of the Aghanim's Continuum event shows us the Continuum device before and after Aghanim used it. And if you look closely at the bands within the orb of the Continuum device, you will notice that they seem to have aligned into a single band after Aghanim used it. And I think this orb represents the Dota multiverse, and all of these bands represent all of the notable parallel universes that exist within the Dota multiverse. And alternatively, this orb might also represent something else. Because if you look really closely, you will see what seems to be continents. So there is also also a chance that this orb might represent the Dota world itself. And if this is the case, these bands could represent all of the notable alternate timelines that the Dota 2 world can have. And this possibility also makes sense because all of the alternate realities that I discussed in this theory series seems to be happening in the same planet but just in separate realities. But either way, it doesn't matter which of these two representations is the correct one. Because in both of these cases, it seems like when Aghanim activated this device, all of these timelines have merged into one timeline. And this looks very similar to how the Loki series represented the sacred timeline. So I am pretty sure that this is a visual cue that indicates that the continuum device have now been calibrated to merge these timelines together. And this actually further proves the point I made in my Aghanim's Continuum Theory video where I said that Aghanim started the countdown for the Great Confluence by activating the continuum device. And what's more is that if you count the number of timelines shown in the continuum device, they add up to four different timelines. So I think these four timelines represents the Horn timeline, the Dragon's Blood anime timeline, the Dota 1 timeline, Line, and of course the Dota 2 timeline, which also includes Dota Underlord and Artifact as well, because like I said before, they also belong in the Dota 2 universe. So I think this is definitely a visual representation of the Great Confluence, because it clearly shows us the merging of these multiple realities, just like how it is stated in Void Spade's Law. And I'm pretty sure all of this is not just a coincidence, but are hints that are dropped by Valve indicating the arrival of this huge crossover event, which is the Great Confluence. And if you look at the definition of the word Continuum, it says that it's a continuous sequence in which adjacent elements are not perceptibly different from each other, but it also says that the extremes can be quite distinct. So we can say that these adjacent elements are the timelines, and these timelines can vary from being very similar to being very distinct from each other. And this actually matches with all of the realities that I mentioned up until now, because some of them are pretty similar to the Dota 2 reality, while the others are a bit different. And I think all of these differences actually show us the relative proximity between these timelines, which basically means how far apart these timelines exist in the Dota multiverse. And according to the contents that we see in each of these universes, I think this is how these timelines are arranged in the Dota multiverse or the Dotaverse as I like to call it. So first off, we have the anime universe, which lies between the Dota 1 and the Dota 2 universes. And this is because the storyline of the anime draws inspiration from both Dota 1 and Dota 2. So it makes sense for the anime timeline to exist between these two timelines. And I chose to place the 
timeline further away from the Dota 2 timeline because all of these other universes have more direct links to the Dota 2 game than Hon. And I believe the Hon universe should be close to the Dota 1 universe because we do know that Hon is derived from the Dota 1 game. So it makes sense for both of them to be closer to each other in the Dota multiverse. And this positioning of these timelines would explain why the timelines that are closer to the Dota 2 timeline have released more prominent crossovers into Dota 2 than the ones that are further away. And by the way, I'm going to ignore Dota Underlords and Dota Artifact because they also exist within the Dota 2 universe and therefore content from these games don't really qualify as true crossovers just yet, at least until they officially make this fact apparent in the Great Confluence event. And this leaves us with the Dragon's Blood anime universe as the closest universe to the Dota 2 universe. And from this anime universe, we literally got a hero crossover and a couple of personas already. And all of them are prominent examples of crossover content that have already arrived in Dota 2. While on the other end of the spectrum, we have the horn crossovers that are so subtle that they are hardly even noticeable, like the Shadow Shaman's immortal cosmetic item, which is clearly based on Shadow Shaman's horn counterpart, which is the Polywog Priest. However, you can see that this horn crossover isn't that obvious. But there is strong evidence that we will see more prominent horn crossovers in the future. Because if you guys watched the Dana Lake analysis videos I did a while back, you will know that I found that a lot of the heroes from the recent Hero Dare leaks seems to be upcoming horn hero ports. And this includes horn heroes like the Puppet Master, Engineer, Nomad, Riptide, Dampier, and many other horn heroes. And you guys can go check out those videos to get more details on this matter. But anyways, what I'm trying to say is that the relative distance or the relative proximity between these timelines seems to create inside with the prominence and the frequency of the crossovers that we get from these other universes. So since the Hon universe is located the furthest away from the Dota 2 universe than these other universes, it seems to be taking a bit more time to fully merge with the Dota 2 universe. So I think the Hon universe is gonna be the last universe that is gonna merge with the Dota 2 universe in this great confluence and mark the beginning of a new era in Dota 2. And since Hon recently shut down, I think the Great Confluence event will soon be upon us. And I feel like we might get some promising news in the upcoming months. Because the upcoming TI-11 Battle Pass and the TI-11 itself would be really good occasions to tease, reveal and even release the long-awaited Great Confluence update. So let's see how it goes. But anyways, that's it for this video guys. If you guys like this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and turn on notifications for more videos like this. And comment down below and let me know what you guys think about the things that I talked about in this video because I would love to know what you guys think. And with that said, don't forget to watch the other videos of this ongoing theory because like I said at the start of this video, this video is just one piece of a bigger interconnected theory. So I highly recommend you guys to go check out those other videos of this ongoing theory to properly understand all of the things that I said in this video. And I'll leave the links for all of the videos that are related to this video in the description box below so you guys can check them out if you like. And with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.